evening and welcome to Up South. Our top stories on the controversy surrounding the release of Vijay's film Kathi, which is set for a big Diwali release. There was doubt about the release of the film after a a few alleged pro tamil groups vandalized a couple of theaters in chennai and they really seem to be turning the knife into superstar vijay and his team but now the issue seems to have been resolved shisha reddy reports from chennai it unfolded like any other movie drama not in real but in real life Mired in controversy, actor Vijay's latest release, Katti, was scheduled to release on Diwali. But on Monday night, Premier Cinema Theatres in Chennai were vandalised, allegedly by pro-Tamil activists. The film has been facing boycott and protest from Tamil outfits, who claim that the proprietor of the film's producer, Laika Productions, has business links with Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapaksha. The production house has been denying the link all along. We don't have any relationship with the Sri Lankan government. That okay? And, and I'm a Tamil, so I'm linked with the Tamils always. So I don't have any issues. I don't see any issue in uh, in um, taking a movie in a Tamil movie in in India. Later in the day, actor Vijay issued a statement assuring his fans that the name of the production house has been removed and the issue has been resolved amicably. Kathi is all set to hit theatres on the 22nd of October as a Diwali treat for fans. The news of a last-minute agreement on the release of Vijay's much-awaited film has brought relief to theatre owners who were watching the negotiations with anxiety. Uncertainty drama finally ends and actor Vijay Kathi is all set to release in 440 screens in Tamil Nadu tomorrow. This is after the Laika Productions agreed to bring down the production company's name in all the publicity material including the title card. Pro Tamil groups have been demanding a ban on this particular film, alleging links with the Sri Lanka president Mahinda Rajapakshi. However, theatre owners met this afternoon and decided to go ahead with the release of this particular film. This is the second time after Vijay's film is running into rough waters. With camera person Daniel Srijaret, the Indian Knife for headlines today. Joining me now from Chennai is my colleague Shisha Reddy, also L. Ravichandar film critic joins me from Hyderabad and film producer Suresh Babu also from Hyderabad. Shisha, to you first, the exhibitors held a meeting around 5 o'clock. What have they actually decided? Are they still apprehensive and scared about actually screening the film? Well, right, Sudhi, the pro-Tamil groups did meet a while ago. They, they just decided one particular thing that they have been saying that they will watch the film tomorrow, the first screening of Kathi. And then if at all they find any links or probably if the name card still holds in the film or if the Laika Productions name appears anywhere in the film, then they will continue to protest. And unless and until they are not calling off the protest, is the strong message that they have been trying to send today. Right. Uh, Mr. Suresh Babu, the critics have been saying that this film's producer has some links with the Sri Lankan president Mahinda Rajpakse, who is almost personal anagrata for these pro-Tamil groups. Do you think that is reason good enough to stall the release of a film? See, I, I really don't know. But about this film, I heard that they had this problem right from the beginning of the film. It's not that the problem came in just now. Uh, when they started the film, these groups had gone to those people and said, please don't do this movie with those people. We are uh, emotionally attached to this cause. Please don't do it. Don't do anything with Sri Lankan-based money. Now, the team went on and they continued to do this. That's where it came to a flash point. Now, see, whether it is right or wrong, uh, actually even the country is fighting on that issue. The Tamil Nadu government wants something. The center wants to do something. So this is a personal issue for a lot of Tamilians. They feel very emotionally about uh, the LTT and the Elam issue. So, and they have to voice their opinion and this is the best platform for them. Now, uh, they don't have any other opportunity. All other uh, 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 doors are shut for them. Right. Uh, Mr. Ravichandar, you heard what Suresh Babu had to say. Now, would you say that there are some filmmakers who continue to cross the line despite knowing fully well that there could be object objections that could be raised during and after the making of the film when it is close to release? No, I don't think they do. 
I think uh, he has a right to make a film merely because he is connected to somebody in another country and understand Sri Lanka is not an enemy country for us and what is enemy in art? He is making a film, he is entitled to make a film and I think in the name of democracy I think we are getting too licentious. Right. Uh, Suresh Babu, films have always been a soft target. As a film producer, you know this better than most of us. Now, what do you think of it? The, do you think that the producer more often than not has no other option but to actually back off, like in this case where the producers have decided to remove the name of Leica Productions from the credit lines? See, basically, fringe uh, groups always want publicity. They, they could be for good reasons or bad reasons. And cinema is the only thing that uh, people like to view. If they stop a small factory somewhere, it's not big news. But if they stop a movie's release, then it's on everybody's mind. Or maximum, they will try and stop a cricket match. Unfortunately or fortunately, we are in a business which is in the limelight and people all watch us. So they use us as soft targets. And this has been going on for quite some time. Now, it is how we handle these people, we talk to them, cajole them, and then there is some understanding. But if egos come in and then there's a standoff, that's when we have problems. Right, Ravichandra, do you think there is more than what meets the eye in these kind of strong arm tactics that are being used by these fringe groups? Huh, I would believe so. Even in the earlier occasion, there was more than meets the eye when uh the Kamala Hassan right. film uh, had so much ado about nothing actually. Oh, surely political muscle flexing is becoming a style of functioning in our democracy. Kerala. The problem is while I agree with the fact that uh, the street is the best place uh, for the theater of uh, democracy, to make it theatric would make it very dangerous. I am one who strongly believes that all this kind of pressure politics must stop. Because finally, if a democracy has to function, it has to function on its basic premise of the right to expression. And if the right to expression is bad, I can understand somebody protesting, protesting within acceptable modes of protest. Getting violent, throwing stones is not the best debate. Now, in a major setback to the BJP in Karnataka, its star face, former Chief Minister B.S. Yadrapa is in the dock for in the disproportionate assets case against him with the Karnataka High Court approving a probe against him and his family members that includes his son MLA Raghavendra. The court today allowed the Lokayukta police probe against Yedrapa and others on a petition challenging the Lokayukta court order dismissing complaints against him in a land denotification case in Shimoga district. The Lokayukta court had dismissed the complaints against Yedrapa and others on the grounds that he had not availed himself of sanction from the governor for prosecution prior to filing the complaint. Uh, what they are telling that the forest land is not correct. So it's already forest department, all others are given the report. So court will take its own decision. I have no objection about that. But I've got under British confidence we are going to get justice. Yes. Day after tomorrow is Diwali and Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister has asked the people of Vizag not to celebrate Diwali with firecrackers because that can actually lead to fires because there are lots of dry leaves and logs lying around in that port city. Instead he has said that you should be celebrating it with Diyas. After Cyclone Hothu's green murder, Vishakapatnam is now staring at an environmental disaster. Ratnika Sharma reports from Vizag. Telltale signs of the massacre of Vishakhapatnam's environment on the roads and on the streets of the city, Cyclone Hood Hood that hit the port on the 12th of October destroyed 80% of Vizag's green cover, raising serious concerns about the impact on the city. I think it's going to be very serious because Vishakhapatnam's real brand is greenery, all the hills. Now with this latest cyclone, uh, many old heritage trees you know, some of those things are more than 200, 300 years. And I saw the old Central Jail uh, Park. Many uh, trees have got uprooted, they're broken. It will take a very, very long time to get back that greenery. It is from the air that you get a real sense of the loss to Vizag. 
For a city that already grapples with air pollution, the loss of green cover will mean higher temperatures and even attract more cyclones. Immediately it will be uh, really difficult for them, um, especially since that area has a lot of air polluting industry and also it's an inversion area, it's a bowel effect is there, hence there is no dispersion of air there. In those conditions, not having tree cover makes a huge difference. The government perhaps not realizing that environment by its very nature cannot have quick fix solutions. Continue to talk of unrealistic time targets. You come after two months. Those trees whose roots were not uprooted, again they will get the branches. I think I am expecting at least 50 to 60 percent of the greenery can be recovered within two months. Wherever the trees are, trees are uprooted, then we will go for a massive plantation. Chief Minister Chandababu Naidu has asked people of Vizag not to celebrate Diwali with firecrackers, lest it spark off fires due to dry leaves and logs still lying around in the city. Celebrating Diwali with Diyas perhaps is a symbolic message of the city's resolve to bounce back. With TSD Ratnika Sharma for Headlines Today.